Hey everybody, what's up? Pantera, I mean ex Hoarder, has a new song out called Year of the Goat, and it marks the return of Pat. No, not the Saturday Night Live character, but Pat O'Brien, one of the most legendary death metal guitar players, one of those guys that can play anything, whose rhythm skills are just as good as their lead skills. Pat is a huge influence on my playing and one of my personal favorite guitar players. And, um, you know, for death metal, his rhythm playing is really unrivaled, in my opinion. And uh, he added a lot of technicality to Cannibal Corpse. But anyway, Pat's back after a few years out of the uh, off the stage and out of the light. You know, he had some pretty severe legal problems. You know, things happen in life, and uh, he seemed to be overcoming those. So it's awesome to see that he's back out there doing stuff. I know that he played it, like, at Maryland Death Fest or a couple other shows with Exhorter. So it's really cool to see him in the band. I know he's in this video. So let's check it out. This is Exhorter with Year of the Goat. Uh, Slaughter in the Vatican, the best Pantera album. I mean, uh, Exhorter album. Ration. You can really hear the influence that they've had on other people, especially with the vocals, too. Last beat. Awesome drumming. Man, that uh, pre-chorus vocal sounds really familiar. Just the tonality of the voice. Faces. All right, Kyle's going to play it first, right on. Hey, all right, not too scabby. I uh, thought it was pretty cool. Um, to be honest, I was hoping we'd get a really crazy solo from Pat, but hey, he's back out there playing again, and that's awesome. He's in a band that he can uh, you know, put his skills to use, in, and that's really cool. Like I mentioned before, he uh, did some live shows with Exhorter. I think he played like Maryland Death Fest and a couple other ones, and uh, it was really cool to see him back out there. Um, 
you know, Pat's a, such a good guitar player and a legendary guitar player. You know, he played in Nevermore. Jeff Lima said he was probably the best guitar player Nevermore ever had, and that's a huge compliment considering considering people like, you know, Chris Broderick were in that band, uh, Tim Calvert, you know, um, other people as well. You know, and Pat was with Mon Monstrosity. He was in Ceremony. He was in Chastain, I think, in the 80s. That's what I read somewhere. I haven't verified that, but it doesn't surprise me. The dude seems like he's capable of playing anything. So that being said, we're going to watch the most brutal thing, in my opinion, that Pat's ever played. And that is, of course, I'm sure everybody that knows who Pat is is going to know what it is. Ah, Frantic Disembowelment. Now, I chose the version that's in the studio without the vocals, just so we get the full effect of the guitar and just how crazy that this song really is. And like Jeff Loomis had said, walk into a guitar store and see somebody playing that, right? And... uh you know, they only played, Cannibal only played the song once, and that's when they had Jeremy Turner, that I think that was an origin, who's in, 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 in Unmerciful now. But anyway, this song's pretty cool. Let's check it out. Here is Frantic Disembowelment. Seven string guitar too at the time. This thing still holds up to this day. Alex Lips are one of the best bass players out there. No Paul Mazurkiewicz, disaster, killing it behind the drums. Doing his best to keep up and hold on. Super awesome. Crazy too, that's some awesome rippage. And uh, I got to say, like, when Pat left Cannibal or Cannibal left Pat, you know, they had to do what they had to do. They lost something. And I'm not saying that Eric Rutan is not awesome in his own right, but the Pat era of Cannibal Corpse will always be, in my opinion, one of the best eras in metal. Death metal aside, but metal in general. And, um, you know, Gallery of Suicide was a huge step up for Cannibal Corpse. You know, they got George during the Vile era, but when Pat joined the band, it elevated that band. And uh, I think Bloodthirst is probably that of the Wretched Spawn or my two favorite Cannibal Corpse records because they were more technical, more driving. George was able to keep up with the uh, cadence of the music. And, it, you know, George Fisher, the neck. And, uh, you know, just elevated that band, getting George and then getting Pat. I think that Cannibal Corpse was the first show I ever saw live. I was probably 14 
and it was in a club with like 200 people in Portland, Oregon. And uh, it was uh, Lamb of, or what was it? High on Fire, Lamb of God, um, Cannibal Corpse, and Demi Borger. And I wasn't a huge fan of the first two bands, but Cannibal and Demi were awesome. And they played Ecstasy and Decay, and it was so heavy when Cannibal played that that all the oxygen in that room was just displaced by how bludgeoningly heavy the uh, sound was. And it, like, I couldn't breathe, and my stomach hurt, and I thought I was going to suffocate, but it was just so brutal. It was awesome, and that I'll never forget that memory. And, um, you know, Pat O'Brien, awesome guitar player, like I said. Awesome to see him back out there playing. And he's in a band where he can utilize his skills. And hopefully the rest of that record showcases some of what Pat can do. And it'll be interesting to hear Pat in a different context. I mean, obviously he can play melodically. I mean, he's known as just like a crazy over-the-top shredding kind of guy. But like, you know, at, even at the end of that song, Year of the Goat, you could hear him playing a more melodic part, something that was slower. And even in some of the uh, instrumental stuff that Cannibal has done, you could hear it. And even in the uh, Nevermore albums too. And like I saw a couple of live videos from back in the day with Pat in Nevermore. And he's just up there, you know, super long hair, just playing, making it look easy. And, uh, you know, that's why Jeff Loomis said he was probably the best guitar player that Nevermore ever had. And it's awesome that uh, we're hearing from Pat. Hopefully they can tour and Pat can be a part of that. I um, don't know what his legal ramifications were. I think he paid like $24,000 in restitution. I think he had like five years of probation with drug and alcohol evaluations and then, like, he was had uh, time served, I think, is what the sentence was. But I don't know for certain, but I, that's what I think I read somewhere. But anyway, awesome song. Um, you know, X-Hoarder, what can you say about that band? They were the first Pantera, or the second Pantera, or the first X-Hoarder. You know, we all know the story that Pantera, um, you know, kind of adopted their sound and their style. Phil had, you know, worked with them in the past, I think, as part of the crew. And he said, hey, that's really cool. Let's ditch the spandex and get the flannels. And even the uh, vocals sound extremely familiar even now Kyle Thomas's uh the chorus the pre-chorus of that song you could hear the influence he's had on other people and if you have not heard X Hoarder uh, their older catalog um the last album they made I can't remember the title of it was really really good but um you know uh the first two records they made were pretty pretty righteous and uh they influenced a lot of bands and one band in particularly but whatever you know they Pantera, you know, reached the success they did because the talent they had and the hard work that they had. So no disrespect to those guys, but we all know where that sound came from, you know. But anyway, enough beating a dead horse. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Hope you saw the interview I had with Greg Keenan on my podcast. It was really cool. Greg stopped by the show. Greg plays bass and skinned in the band Hated as well. And I'll be seeing him at NAMM 2024 in a couple weeks uh, down in Anaheim. I'm going to be performing at the Siggy Braun uh, Guitars booth. I'm going to be doing some performance and some lessons. And I also have a mini tour with Brian DeLeonis and some other awesome Southern California bands. We're going to do some dates around NAMM. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for more guitar content. I got something really cool I'm working on. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe is always appreciated. Check out the video I did with my good friend Mark Babson, the adjunct professor of violin at Willamette University. It's a tough word to say. Um, here in Salem. So, yeah, check all that stuff out. Appreciate your guys' appreciate your guys' support. Have a good weekend. Right on.